Hoichika, Queen's North Alaskan Cane Stems, Kohopmish. I'm uh, Chief Bill Williams, Squamish Nation, and uh, we, we are here at the confluence of the, uh, the Sims and the Ilaho, known by most people outside the Squamish Nation, and um, uh, Squamish Nation members call this place Nukwant Ayansot, a place of transformation. And that's what we um, believe that the, the, uh, the Sims Valley uh, represents, uh, or has represented in, in our teachings and history. I should say. And um, we are here today to, to help mark this day. Today is a celebration. It's a, it's a beautiful day. Uh, one of our dear, dear friends who has passed away a number of years ago, um, John Clark, uh, they, um, a group of people have, have requested that um, the provincial government change uh, the name of a mountaintop to commemorate the late John Clark and they have done so and we are here to celebrate that that day and uh, have a celebration and, and a, a Squamish Nation ceremony uh, a naming ceremony to 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 people that are here to let them know that uh, the name uh, announce the name properly in, in, the, in the traditional way what uh, we are going to be doing in, in the ceremony is, is is going to be an announcing ceremony and um, uh, what, what we will have is I have um, um, Aaron uh, Moody uh, I heard him as a speaker to speak on on the family's behalf as, as part of our traditions in the Longhouse we have to have a speaker to speak on behalf of the family and he will call witnesses and uh, these witnesses will um, will hear uh, the, uh, the, the name that we're going to re-announce for the, for the name of the mountain t uh, this afternoon and um, and uh, after the witnesses hear the name, uh, that is all the work that we will be doing, making sure that people understand that how important this, this work is to, to just come all this way to, to do one thing and one thing only to make to, to have people witness what is the name, and because uh, the the name is significant and it, it identifies who that uh, who that individual is, and uh, w once the naming is over, then we'll ask the witnesses to speak from their heart and their mind what they saw and what they heard. And, um, and once that is over with, that is the whole, the whole event. Uh, and I know that uh, there are a group of 15 are going to go right to the top of um, uh, the, the mountain and, and, and put a canister up there with some messages and some notes in the canister. And um, that is, uh, once that's done, probably tomorrow around 11 or so, or noon, uh, then that'll be the, the complete end of our, of, our, of our ceremony for the weekend. What, what's happening here today is a naming. What was known as Sun Peak, uh, the mountain at the, at the top of this little little hike here, um, it's been known as Sun Peak. And through the work of the family, and I understand that Lisa Bale was 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 key uh, as a leader in this, the name will be changed to Mount John Clark. So Sun Peak, that that name will be changed to Mount John Clark in recognition of that, that beautiful man who, who spent so much time here in the woods. I met John right here, right in this little pullout right here, a number of years ago. John carried a name from the Squamish people. When we give someone a name, it's like saying, you may have come from anywhere else in the world, but to us, your family. So our, our Siampir gave John Clark the name Hulksalkan. And in our way, it's like an adopt an adoption. And sometimes those adoptions, sometimes those names don't don't go they don't get passed down in the family. They'll they'll stay for the lifetime of one person. So Hoxalkin was a name that John it was a Squamish name. A very, very uh, important name that John carried for his lifetime. And he carried it very, very well. He made us a, a richer people for carrying our name in such a good way. He he lifted that word up with the kind of just the way he was let alone the things that he did in life. So we want to explain that to you in case some of you were wondering why we're not using the ancestral name. That was just a name that John carried for his lifetime um, because our chief, because our kids love that man so much. So the name will be his uh, English name. It'll be Mount John Clark. It, it, uh, it's an important thing. To, to change the names on our, our maps, to change the names that we, we the way it changes the way we look at the world, and maybe people will hear that 
will hear that new name and they'll wonder why. And maybe they'll start to, to look into the kind of man that he was. They'll read, uh, they'll read John's book. Uh, they'll, um, they'll, they'll do a search of him. They'll start to wonder what kind of man merited uh, changing a, a map for. And they'll find out a bit of who he was and a bit of, a bit of the beautiful work that he did. Today, we want to make sure that, that we want to make sure that this moment didn't pass without stopping for just for just a little bit of time and and re remembering that beautiful man and acknowledging the work the hard work that some people have done to change the name so we want to, to mark today just by announcing that naming and our chief that's what he had in his heart today that's all the work he wanted to do in 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 our this makes it our law when we call witnesses like that so we wanted we wanted everyone to know today so that's the work that we had in mind, and that's the entirety of it. But um, it uh, often swelled. It makes me, um, Dan George would say, it makes my heart sore to see so many beautiful human beings together back up here in the, in the woods in the, in the sandbar. So thank you for coming. Thank you for, gi for giving up a day of your life to come out here and be a part of this. We realize that some people are going to uh, sneak off and uh, start, start packing and uh, get ready to, to, to hike away. But I, we want to make a little bit of time for some of the people who were called as witnesses to step forward and to share what they have in their heart. So the floor is open to the witnesses right now, LCM. The way my grandfather taught me, your, your family was, was who was involved in your life, who would, who would live in your house. And, um, you know, sometimes you find yourself loving some, someone so much. They're like a brother or like a cousin or like an uncle. And, the, and I, I think that's what our people felt about John. He was... Uh, and people just fell in love with him right away and you know honestly for for Squamish people we don't meet a lot of other people who love the land so much and uh, you know I'd kind of grown up a little bit suspicious of mountaineers because I thought they were just trying to conquer the world and get on top of it and you know say that they were they were the best but uh, John was such a humble man I think he just loved being outdoors and he loved the view from uh, atop the mountains and you know he he just loved being outside and uh, you know he spoke about nature the way the way my uncles did and uh, you know, he wanted to be around for the next generation and more than just talking about it he wanted to do something about it and he didn't want it to be a big fight he didn't want to make people feel bad about themselves or um, to feel bad they hadn't been engaged yet he just uh, gave them an opportunity that was easy to accept and a lot of fun to accept um, so I um, you know the, his name Hulk Salkin literally means uh, mountain goat in Squamish and uh, I guess our chiefs took one look at his crazy white hair and bouncing around on the mountaintops and it just made sense. But uh, the Hook Sulkin, they're, um, they're on the, sort of the far edges, the most, uh, the most difficult terrain of our territory. They're high, high up in um, some really challenging spots. And those are the spots we believe that uh, the most power comes from. It uh, flows down from those high peaks to these beautiful creeks and streams and rivers. and uh, when, when, when we're around that aspect of our nature, we find ourselves refreshed and inspired. And I think uh, John brought a lot of that back. He brought a lot of it back into the city, um, into some spots that really needed it. And more, more than that, he brought people out here to share a little bit of what he saw. So yeah, we uh, had a big party leave from Vancouver early on Saturday morning. We, uh, Made the long drive up to Squamish and uh, stopped a few scenic places, waterfalls and stuff. And then there was a ceremony um, near where John's ashes are placed by the cedar trees at the trailhead. A uh, very nice ceremony uh, with Bill Williams, Chief Bill Williams of the Squamish Nation in charge. And um, then we set off about 3 p.m. And I made the long, grueling ascent up to uh, some camping spots, uh, probably five or six hundred meters above Bug Lake. Uh, got a little bit separated there as darkness was approaching and camped. Everybody had a good night, I think, and uh, the way it worked out was okay. The hike up here has been great. I mean, it's a bit of a grind. I mean, the first, the first haul, um, what it's about, a, it's about a mile up. Uh, and we camped out. Um, yeah, it was good. It's uh, an arduous 
climb, but, but some beautiful, absolutely amazing views. And uh, this last little part up here, putting the crampons on, cutting across part of the glacier was a lot of fun. And, and then this last peak section, it, uh, it's uh, aptly named John Clark. It's got a lot of the different uh, features of it that I'm sure he'd love. So. So yeah, lots of people have helped to put the John's name on here. Educators, conservationists, wilderness people, the First Nations, Chief Bill Williams was, I think without Chief Bill, perhaps this, this peak wouldn't be named after John. Um, that had a very strong influence. It's very hard to, to even if a, if a peak has a, a nickname, like this one, some peaks, not official, very, very hard to, to, uh, to change the name. So uh, we really had to go out of our way to do that. And this whole area, I'd like to say, is John's classroom. This is where he would bring the kids. They did traverses. They were uh, down in Sims Creek and Bug Lake. And, and um, all his witness program, of course, was down in Sims Creek. And uh, John is down in Sims Creek. His ashes are there. And some of his ashes are by uh, big big fir or it's a big cedar actually I think near the creek and then up by those twin firs. I'd just like to say hi to Bridget and Kevin Clark who would have loved to be there here. We're on Mount John Clark. Hi Bridget and Kevin. Yeah, I'm in CI. Chin, come and tell me.